What's up guys, Justin here from thesketchupessentials.com, back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So this week, all week, I'm out at SketchUp 3D Basecamp, but um, I wanted to today do a tutorial about how to use Slicer to create a spherical light fixture. So I was out to dinner last night. I actually got to go out to dinner with Daniel Tall and the guys from uh, Mindsight Studios, the placemaker guys. And while we were out, um, I saw these kind of cool light fixtures. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to do these general shapes using the extension slicer in order to make these lights. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So first things first, let's just go ahead and take a look at this fixture. So basically, if you look at it, um, it's actually cardboard, so we're just going to model the slices. We're not actually going to model the cardboard pieces. That would get a lot more complicated. And if you kind of look over here, it's a little bit wavy, and that's more because there's gaps in the cardboard, I think, than because there's actually any kind of wave in there. So we're going to make kind of uniform waves. And if you wanted to, you could kind of move things around and rotate them just a bit after the fact. But for now, we're just going to focus on making this shape. So in order to do that, we're obviously going to need to draw our sphere. And we've talked about how to draw draw a sphere before, we're just going to draw a pair of circles. So you're going to tap the C key to activate the circle tool, then you're going to click once, and you're going to move your mouse out to however big you think this is going to be. I'm going to do, um, we'll do a one foot radius on this circle, and then we're going to draw another circle in the center of this circle. So, and you can see how I was able to lock this to the green axis by tapping the left arrow key. So now if I click in here, I can just draw another circle. And that's going to be important because we're going to use this in order to extrude this into a sphere. So in order to do that, you're going to start by single clicking on this face, coming over to the follow me tool, and then just clicking on your circle. That's going to let you basically extrude this in a circle to create a sphere. So now you have kind of your spherical shape in here. So now we can get started um, working on setting this up so that we can slice it up using slicer. And so if we look at this image, you can see how basically this is a sphere all the way to the bottom where there's a plane cutting this off. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle across the bottom of the circle um, at the level where I want to um, cut this off. And if you remember, when we use slicer, it needs to be a solid, a manifold solid. So you have to be a little careful in how we do this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to stand this up so that this geometry is running um, horizontally instead of vertically like this. So you always want to work with your geometry, not against your geometry. And so in order to do that, I'm just going to select my sphere. And um, you can turn on hidden geometry to make this a little bit easier. But I'm going to go ahead and select this sphere. And then I'm going to activate the rotate tool by tapping the Q key. And I'm just going to tap the right arrow key and click on the bottom of this sphere. And then you can see how I move out. I'm just going to click and I'm going to rotate this up. So now we have our sphere kind of ready to go. And what we need to do is we need to basically cut this off around the bottom. And the nice thing about the way the hidden geometry is in here is you can actually see about where we'd want to cut this off. So in this case, that would be about right along this curve. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to start erasing out geometry down here at the bottom. And what that's going to do is that's going to start cutting our circle off. And you can see how there's a really natural cutoff point in this sphere. And so what that leaves us with that is that leaves us with a spherical shape. And so the next thing we want to do is we want to use the extension slicer to slice this. But if I was to right click and make this a group right now, you can see how it doesn't show up as a manifold solid because there's a hole in it. So what we would want to do in this case is we would want to take this sphere. And first of all, you always need to save your model when you're using Slicer. It won't work otherwise. So it's always going to tell you to save the SketchUp file. And so once you've saved your model, what you need to do is you need to come in here and you need to actually heal across this face. So, and all that means is you just need to take a line and draw it from one point to the other point, something like this. Now, we've closed in our circle. If we look at our sphere, it's completely closed in. If I click off of this and then click on it again, you see how it says solid group? That's an indicator that this is a solid, meaning there's no holes in it. Well, now Slicer can work with it. And so what we want to do now is we want to come in and use the extension slicer in order to slice this up into pieces. And we need to do a little bit of math on this one real quick and just figure out what we want, basically what we want the spacing of our slices to be or the thickness of our slices to be. Um, so, and that, a lot of that's going to depend on how, a lot of that's just going to depend on how many slices you want in here. 
So I'm going to come in and I'm going to measure from the top to the bottom. And you can see it, I'm, I'm at about 1 foot 10 inches. So if this is 1 foot 10 inches, and let's say we wanted this to have something like something like 50 slices. Well, 1 foot 10 inches is approximately 22 inches. So all we would do is set our spacing to 22 inches divided by 50. So we would set this to 0.44 inches for each one of these slices. So if I click on this, I would just come in here and I would just, uh, I would want to set my thickness of each one of these to 0.44. And I would also want to set my spacing to 0.44 because what we want is we want all of these stacked on top of each other. We don't want a, a space in between each one of them. So now what this is going to do is this is going to split this up into a slice every 0.44 inches. You also need to make sure it's set on the Z axis, which is the up and down axis. So the other thing we're going to turn off is we're going to turn off our references and our flatten. You can definitely leave those on, especially if you're going to like CNC route this or something like that. But we don't really need that for this exercise. And so once we've got that kind of set up, um, you don't really... You may want to set a little bit of an inset, maybe like 0.44 on the end, because um, I'm not sure what the end is going to do in this case. And then we're just going to come in here and we're going to click OK. It's going to ask if we want to add the outlines of adjacent slices. I'm going to say no. And we'll see what this comes up with. See, and so you can see that there's a little bit of a problem in here because this isn't hollow. So what we want is we want for this to be hollow. Um, we want this to be kind of spherical with a hollow inside. And you can see how when we do it this way, it makes these solid, which is okay. I mean, if you if you're all right with this being, if you're all right with this being solid, that's totally fine. You can definitely do that. However, what we could do is we could come in here and we could use an extension like a joint push pull. So let's see. I'm going to turn my hidden geometry off. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to activate joint push pull. And I will link to this in the notes down below. And we're just going to give this a little bit of thickness. So I'm just going to click here. We'll do a joint push pull. And I'm actually going to turn on x ray mode so that I can see what's going on inside of this. I'm just going to single click. And in this case, I'm actually going to type in an offset of something like, we'll say, 0.25 and hit the enter key. And so what that did, and you can't really see it right now, we're going to turn x-ray mode back off. Um, what that did is that gave this thickness. So if you were to come in here and delete out this face and this face, you can see how now you can kind of go inside of this and see on the inside. And I'm just going to do an undo there. And so now this should still be in here as a solid group um, because this still doesn't have any holes in it. So now we're going to come back and we're going to try slicer again. So I'm going to click on the slicing tool. And again, I'm just going to set this to 0.44 for each one of these. I'm going to leave the references off and I'm going to click OK. And I'm still going to say no on the outlines of adjacent slices. And so you can see how this kind of worked. It kind of put these in here, but it also filled in a couple of these objects, which we didn't really want, or a couple of these planes. And so what we can do is we can use the section plane tool. And uh, we can place a section plane across this to see which ones are solid on the inside. And then it's just a question of double clicking inside of them and just deleting out those faces. So you need to make sure you're only selecting the face, um, not anything else, so that your perimeter stuff is still staying inside your model. But again, you can see it's pretty easy to come in here and do that. So now you can see on the inside of this, you have the inside of a sphere. And one thing you could do on something like this if you really wanted to, is you could probably add just a little bit of a gap in between these, um, just to make it look a little bit more natural. So, and that's kind of a personal preference thing. You can kind of do whatever you want with that. Um, but let's go ahead and go back and do that real quick. So I'm just gonna do some undos. And this is why it's a lot of the time a good idea to make a copy of your geometry before you do slices. So that way you can, um, if you want to come back and try again later, you can do that. So in this case, let's say, for example, 0.44 is about 7 16 So let's say maybe the spacing, we set it to something like, we'll try 8 16 and see what that does. And we'll go ahead and click OK. 
And that's still not quite enough gap for me, so maybe we'll set it to 9 sixteenths. So you can see all I'm doing is just, I'm just doing trial and error with the way these are kind of spaced out. But you can see how that gives us a little bit more gap in here. We are going to have to go back in and delete out that inside stuff. But now that you know the basics of how to create a shape like this, it should be pretty easy for you to go in and fix that. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you know you could do this with Slicer? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.